Okay, so this was a bit of a delayed order, what with the fire and COVID and whatnot. Um, this is a kitchen unit I'm making. It's to match an existing kitchen, but I'm gonna add chestnut doors and uh, profiling on the top and bottom to key that in with a table that I made for the client, a chestnut table, uh, also in the same kitchen. So um, unfortunately I didn't install this and at the moment, while I'm editing the video, I don't have footage or pictures of it in position. I am hoping to get them at some point. So the main carcass is made of tulip wood. That's what I'm processing here. As I say, it's gonna be sprayed. I don't really like working with MDF, so tulip wood is a great wood if you're gonna spray a carcass for a kitchen. So at the moment I'm processing all this tulip wood ready for lamination for the sides and the shelving top and bottom. I still use biscuits on basic laminating joints, helps just keep things aligned, adds a little bit of strength. I don't actually have a cordless biscuit joint, I wish I did, maybe I'll get one one day. I've just got a basic biscuit cutting bit for my router. Okay, so if you've got a nice big panel saw or the facility, the first thing you do, I don't always do this um, on this kind of cabinet, I would, but is just to make sure the MDF is square. So it's just a four-sided cut all the way around, just taking literally the width of the blade off. After that first cut, you're referencing your own saw, and if that's set up correctly, you're gonna get a perfect square. And that will help if you're doing quite tight tolerances on your joinery. But I have done this without squaring 
the um, sheet up. I've checked the sheet and it was really good. Um, if you haven't got really big saw, it can be a pain squaring up a sheet before you start. So here we are again on another project, yet again using the grooving facility on the Altendorf. I absolutely love it. You're going to see me using it all the time. This is just cutting the rebate for the um, rear panel MDF. Uh, and I have got a grooving unit for this. I need to have it adapted to fit. But by the time you've fiddled around installing the grooving unit to try and do it in one pass, with a 3.5 or 3.2 mil kerf, there's not many passes and this saw makes easy work of it. If you were to fit a dado stack or a grooving unit, you'd need to stop, you'd need to install it, you'd need to put the inserts in or the spacers, you'd need to do a test cut. Here I'm just cutting 12 mil and I did no setup, just literally boom, done. In case you haven't seen this before, I have done a video on it. It's a white hill cutter for the HK85. It cuts a kind of bead stop, brilliant for doing panel work. I've even used it on a glue joint of a door uh, to make it look like a traditional sort of bead and butt. Brilliant bit of kit, really useful. I will put a link in the description. Okay, so now we're getting on to machining up the chestnut for the doors.
So I am actually laminating some of this chestnut up. Maybe the hinge side is going to be fine, but I'm going to laminate the centers. Sometimes, I don't know, in a kitchen especially, if it's really warm space, um, with a, and it's quite a thin 22, 23 mil door, you laminate one of the styles. Um, it really, really helps keep things flat and true. Okay, so I'm just using the programs again here to cut the rebates for the glazing. This time it's a new program, not double glazing for kitchen, just four mil toughened. Uh, just two passes, done. Okay, so see this little mistake, easily done on these tiny dominoes. You cut the slot for, I think it's the five mil or the six mil, and then you accidentally use the one size down domino, which looks quite similar out of the box. As you can see, it's pretty sloppy fit that first attempt. It can be a good idea to make your doors a few mil oversize. If you've got the facility to just cut them back like a couple of mil all round, you can then get them perfectly square from the glue up and trim them to the cabinet if needed. Thank you. 
Okay, so after the fire, unfortunately, I didn't realize I'd lost a jig for fitting these hinges and I really need to crack on with it. So I did this with the marking out method. It's so easy to do with a little two quid plastic jig. Um, I don't really recommend marking it out. It is possible, but it is much slower. Workshop is still being rebuilt as we speak. That is why it's so noisy everywhere. There's people all over the place trying to finish this epic task. So sorry about all the banging. So I sent the client a selection of samples in the post for the little header, which is kind of the only artistic bit, I guess, other than adding the chestnut door fronts to match in with the English chestnut table I made for them a few years ago. So this uh, basic kitchen unit, uh, they selected what they liked and there we are, really nice little profile. Give their kitchen that kind of custom look. I don't use this lamello very often, uh, but when you have mitres, there is nothing like it for making that perfect glue joint clamp. It's so quick and handy. So what you notice, one of the main differences with, say, the lamello and the domino is that lamello references the outside face of the mitre. And I think that's the key, really. I guess you could do it with a domino, um, but they don't, their kind of support is really designed to do the inside edge, uh, whereas the lamello has this kind of cut-out V at the top. So it, it pushes, if there's any intolerance errors with the surface, it makes the outside surface flush rather than the inside, so really good on the cornices and dados.
So if you're new to spraying, I'm no expert, that's for sure. Um, and the conditions here are far from uh, optimal. Working outside, hoping it's not gonna be too windy. Uh, this is a water-based product. It's the easiest um, and the hardest wearing uh, to apply for say the kitchen units. I'm gonna be denibbing this with the ultra fine pad here. You can get these ramicas as well. Link in description for all the abrasives and the paints that I use and that hard wax oil that you know me for. Um, but you can with these ultra fine pads and the sort of finish we're going for, even on the last coat, a very, very light denib, just in case you're not an expert sprayer. But this is looking pretty good. Um, it's gonna have a last coat today, then it will be ready for assembly. Uh, as I said, I'm no expert in spraying. There's much more uh, detailed videos on doing spraying, but there's something I have to do for this project. Um, and you can see, you can do it with virtually minor equipment, just need a compressor uh, and an outdoor space to achieve this kind of finish.